Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and I have some excellent news for Godot developers. Godot has moved to the web. That's right. From now on, you want to use Godot, you fire up your browser. This is the only option. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. Still download Godot, use it on your platform of choice, but now you have an additional option, which is to run Godot in the web browser. In fact, if you look in front of you, uh, other than this little bar at the top with loader, editor, and so on, you probably couldn't tell that this is actually running in the browser. If I hit right click, uh, we get the right click menus. If uh, you move around, you move around. The performance is great. Zooming in, zooming out. This is a Godot. This is the 2D platformer project. And it runs entirely in, in the browser. And, and it's actually pretty impressive because you're actually getting full... Um, the full experience here. So if I want to move that guy over there, I can move that guy over there. Basically, pretty much everything you want to do in traditional Godot, you can now do in Godot in the browser. So as you saw, I am actually running this guy in my web browser at godotengine.org forward slash online forward slash godot.tools.html. And yeah, anybody, just hit that domain and you can uh, start working on Godot. So what are the use cases for this? Well, one of the big things that I could see using this for is if you're in an environment where you can't install Godot, let's say you're using, number one, a Chromebook, an Android tablet, uh, an iPad, any of those things, you could actually run up Godot on those devices now using this interface. That is a huge kind of new segment or, or market where you can move into. On top of that, if you are a student and you are working at school, say you're on a, the computer library, uh, the library's computers and you, you can't install anything, head to a browser and now you can. So obviously there are going to be some underlying changes. The file system behind it obviously needs to be virtualized to a degree. So how do you get your content up or down? Well, that is done by basically zipping up your project and sending it over. So you could save your project as a zip file on uh, OneDrive or um, uh, Dropbox or Google Drive or whatever, and then send it up here when you get to you know work or wherever. You can even email it to yourself. Doesn't really matter. Just basically, you upload a zip file. I'll show you that process in a little bit. You come up here, you do your editing of choice. However, you want to use Godot. Godot is the exact same thing. Uh, everything is the same. You will notice um, if I grab a script, we've got the full script editor. Um, you can. Again, zoom everything in if you so wish. I am actually running this in my browser in 4K in order to make it so you could actually read what was going on. I scaled up the interface, which you can do so right here. There are a few things that I can't seem to do. I can't seem to get into theming for some reason. I'm not sure if that's a coming in the future thing or just how the world is going to work for now. Uh, but you get the full experience. You get code completion in here. Uh, so if I do... See, we're getting code completion, code suggestions, and so on. It is basically the same experience. You can also debug your code. And speaking of your code, let's go back here to the uh, 2D editor side of things. And if I hit play on this guy, there is my game running in the browser. You notice we're now in another tab, so I can switch back to the editor by clicking editor. Or I can go back to my game by clicking game. It is the full game running, so let's give mouse focus. Keyboard running, there you go. So. Full-blown game running in the editor. I can just kind of click the X button to get out of that. You see it's all grayed out now. And we are back in the editor. So what happens when I've done, gone in, made all of the changes I want to do, and now I want to go ahead and say um, export my workout. Well, there is a new menu in here. So it's project, tools, download project source. Click this, and there is your game as a zip file, project.zip. Let it download, and then you can upload that back in anytime you want. And that is essentially how your workflow goes. So this is uh, Godot running <laughs> entirely in the browser, officially supported by the Godot team. And again, this is cool because you can run this on your phone, mobile device, devices like a computer library, a library computer. I'm going to make computer library into a word, damn it. And it is otherwise the Godot experience you know and love today. So people, we don't all need to fear the cloud. Don't worry, Godot is not going cloud only, but it is also going cloud additional. Again, that's a cool thing about Godot essentially being written in Godot. There was another project that did this, kind of an amateur's project, but this one, again, is the official Godot repository. All right, so now we get back to the whole uh, how do we do this thing. Uh, we'll just quit out of there. So we start things off. Basically, what you do is go to that URL. So open up a browser. We'll come back to that in a second. Open up a browser, go to that address. You come to this page right here. And now what you're going to want to do is upload the project you want to work with. Here is the platformer.zip file. I'm just gonna go ahead, browse. We'll pick platformer no sound.zip. There it is. Uh, once that is selected, we'll go ahead and start the editor right here. 
Um, this brings you to your loader screen. So here we are. I've already imported it in this particular case. But what you're going to want to do on the first time is import the project you just uploaded. Go over here, click the import button right there. And then you've got it just like normal Godot, pick uh, where to go. So first off, where are we going? So we'll go preload.zip. Double click that one. And then the installation path is under home web user. So we'll go in here and browse. So we're in web user, just go into projects. There's already one I made there. So let's make a new one. Uh, my little project coding is magic. All right, so there you go. Select current folder, import and edit. And that's it. So basically you upload your zip file. If it isn't already loaded in, you see there is an element of persistence there. Let it load up. Here we are in it right now, as you can see, 3.2.4 beta. The performance is just fine. It, it, it's actually almost identical to working in a uh, the normal environment. In fact, it kind of hijacks your browser in a way. So for example, I'm running this full screen. You can see here if I come to the top, but if I hit the F11 key, nothing happens because um, I think Godot is stealing that for something. So what you're going to want to do, if you want to go full screen or not full screen, you're going to have to manually do so. Hitting the F11 key is being eaten. So various different keys are being eaten by the Godot editor. So just be aware of that. If you're if you're trying to communicate with your browser, for example, let's see if I hit F5. Yeah, F5 runs the game. So instead of doing a browser refresh, which is what you would expect if you hit F5, it instead is run game. So do be aware of that. It is hijacking your keyboard keys to the browser, which totally and 100% makes sense. So this is part of a bigger announcement. So it's just kind of an update on the Godot web export process. I've uh, been a lot of improvements across the board. There's a few things they're still working on. Virtual keyboard support uh, on mobile is challenging because one of the problems is in order to get the keyboard, it ends up popping up the on-screen keyboard, which causes all kinds of problems. And I'm used to this being an issue. Another cool thing that they are working on right Right now is GD native support for HTML5. Now GD native is becoming more and more important to Godot in general. It is a way of doing native bindings so you basically can uh, add an existing C or C++ library or uh, support for a new device like the Oculus Quest or whatever. You can you can write it using the GD native link. It, it, it's a easier than a module because you don't have to completely rebuild the engine. I actually did a breakdown of you know the various different things. Look for my video uh, using C++ in Godot and I'll talk through the difference between a module versus a plugin or uh, GD native and so on. So, so do be aware they are working on getting GD native support working in HTML5 exports. Uh, there's a little bit more details about that. They kind of walk into some of the issues that are there specifically. Uh, dynamic linking is a bit of the problem there. Dynamic linking, you know, when you use the word DLL, well, the D and the L um, our dynamic link. Uh, so it basically is any loadable, hot swappable type of code um, has some problems here. And that's one of those things that are working around with WebAssembly. Uh, so there, there's some issues there. But the good news is after a huge refactor of Godot code to play nice with the build tool chain, they are very close to getting GD native support for web exports. Once that's done, in a lot of ways, um, the web exports are going to be pretty much identical to all other platforms. And it's also going to make it so that if you write GD native extensions, it's going to be working on pretty much all of the platform options out there. Another thing here, obviously, is that there is the um, uh, the new experimental build of the Godot web editor, which is what we saw in action earlier on. So there is that prototype version available. You want to check that out again. It's at godotengine.org forward slash online forward slash godot.tools.html. And I will, of course, link that down below if you want to go ahead and check that out. So I know there's a handful of people or quite a few people out there that aren't really that keen on doing web development in the browser, but I, I honestly, I am. I think there's a lot of, of power there, a lot of things that are really interesting to check out. So uh, I think this is definitely a progress point. I think having an official web version of the Godot tools themselves is a good thing for all the reasons I already gave. And uh, I like to see that the GD Native potentially is coming to the web export target that will simplify the world in general. By the way, if you are interested, there were a few other announcements going on here. So we've got the progress report. That's what we were talking about right here. Uh, there's also a progress report from um, George Marquez. I'm guessing that's how you say that. It might be Marquis Marquez. I, I have no idea, actually, to be honest. Uh, but he also did an update on his GD script progress. Um, you know, things like uh, typed Godot script dynamically. Some really nice things coming in this announcement as well. So do be sure to check that out while you are there. Uh, so 
yep, definitely uh, some nice improvements going on in the world of uh, Godot. Uh, Godot running in a browser. What do you think of it? Will you ever use it? Do you see a use case here? Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.